Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Green Room with Jade Million. We're doing a solo episode again today. You guys have seemed to really enjoy these ones and um, I love doing them. So we're just going to talk a little bit about my life today, the place that I've been at mentally lately. Um, basically, I've kind of been in a bit of a funk and this tends to happen every now and then with me, honestly, more times than I would like to admit. But I think it would be maybe beneficial to some other people and honestly to myself if we kind of talked about how to get out of um, just feeling low and feeling like you're in a low place. Um, but before that, I do want to catch you guys up because I think it will kind of make sense as to why I'm in the place that I'm in about just some things that um, I've been doing lately and some experiences that I've had. So I actually did a trip to New York City, I think at this point, maybe two weeks ago. And I was so excited for this because I was actually performing a show. And um, it was an original sh like showcase so I got to perform all my own music, um, and that's really the goal this year is to be performing my own stuff for the most part. So I got the opportunity to go out there and um, play at this venue called Drome, and it was with this company called Major Stage that I've known forever. So I was really excited. I was like, cool, this is like a step in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm traveling outside of Nashville. I'm performing my own stuff. Very excited. So I get on a plane, go to New York City. I end up booking my hotel room the day of. And I had this idea to try to basically get like a really nice room for a discounted price if I booked last minute because I've heard of that happening with hotels tonight. And I was like, this honestly could be a disaster. <laughs> like, This could be such a bad idea. Um, waking up day of the flight, no hotel. Ended up working out so good. And that was like the common theme of this 48 hours I spent in New York City. Everything that could go right went right. It just felt like one thing after the other was just falling into place. And I kind of feel like when that is happening, it means you're on the right track, you're on the right path. And it's just like a thumbs up from the universe, you know? So I get this gorgeous hotel room for so cheap. Like I was looking at rooms that were super shitty for like even a little bit more than the price that I paid. Um, use hotel tonight, by the way. I need a brand deal from them. Um, so I get this gorgeous hotel, hotel in Rivington. And I mean, I was like blown away when I walked in the room. I was like, I don't I didn't even know these kind of rooms exist in New York City because normally even the nice hotels, the rooms are like boxes, like they're very small, um, super tight. And this was like open floor to ceiling windows, gorgeous views of the Lower East Side. And I just felt so bougie. I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly the uh, mood that I want to get in before I perform. So I flew into New York City no flight delays, no nothing. It was like easy peasy. My flight was at 1030, which I think is like the perfect morning flight time. Got to sleep, got to work out in the morning, get on the plane. Flight was two hours. Um, yeah, got to the hotel. It was stunning. And I just had a moment to myself. And I basically just like showered, took my time getting ready, got some sushi. The hotel had like a free wine happy hour and they just had like bottles of rosé out on the um counter and they were like yeah take out how, how much you want. So it was just a vibe. And then that night was my show, which I was also taking a risk by the way, like flying in the morning of my show that was kind of insane. But um prayed for the best and the best happened. My friend David who is actually an A&R with Sony in the rap division, like it was one of the subsidiary labels I think under Sony. He lives in New York and he came out and met me at my show. So I did not know anybody, by the way, at my show besides David. Um, and I just kind of went into it like hopefully I get some new people who fuck with my music. So I uh, was very nervous. I'm not going to lie. And I was definitely like the the lineup was super hip hop R&B and 
like I said earlier, like I don't even really classify myself under anything anymore. So I was definitely like an enigma, I think, for this um, vibe and this lineup. And I had my acoustic guitar, you know, I pulled that out at the last song. I did three songs to tracks and then I pulled my acoustic guitar out at the end. But it went so good. Like at the end, when I pulled my acoustic out and I did Energy, which in itself is like a hip hop and R&B song. But when you take it and put it on acoustic guitar, it like has a whole different vibe to it. But they went crazy. They were like super about it. They loved it. Um, There's probably like 50 people there. Like it was not anything major, maybe 50 people. Like I'm being generous. Um, But it was just so great. And I was in such a good mood after David was like, do you want to like go out in New York City? And I was like, duh, of course I do. So we go to, we go grab dinner from Lil, I said Lil, Lil Frankie's, <laughs> Little Frankie's, um, which is like one of the best Italian places in the city. It's very uh, traditional Italian. So bomb. Like some of the best food I've ever had. You can't go wrong with pasta, but when it's authentic, like Italian pasta, it's just the best food in my opinion. Um, we drank wine, we ate pasta, then we like hopped around to some of the Lower East Side bars that he likes. We went to Soho House there. It was just cute. It was like the perfect, like not too crazy at all, just enjoying myself kind of night. And I went home, did my skincare and got like a full eight hours of sleep. So I just had the best time ever. And then the next day I woke up um, and since I had to check out of my room, they actually gave me an, an extra hour and a half in my room, which was so nice. Um, because I woke up a little late, but I basically just left my bags at the hotel and walked around the city for the day and went shopping and just, I love, love exploring places by myself. And that was a point I wanted to make. Traveling alone is always the best. For me, I personally think that it is the way to travel. Like, I don't know if it's because I love being alone. I'm very like hyper independent almost. Um, it doesn't bother me to just be in my own company all day. And I have the best time. Anytime I travel alone, I meet people, I make friends. I feel very present. That was the biggest thing that I was thinking about when I was walking around the city. Like traveling alone forces you to be really present in the present moment. Like I never felt, not never, but in so long, like I don't remember feeling that present in my own body because you have to be. You don't know where you are. You don't know your surroundings. You're like, you know, kind of looking out for yourself and you're trying to figure out where to go. So it just forces you to be in the here and now. And I feel like that's something we all struggle with nowadays, which is why I think going somewhere new by yourself is like so beneficial to your mental health. Even if you just, I don't know, drive like an hour outside of your city or town and just like go do something alone. It just, it totally like reset me. It rejuvenated me And I know traveling sometimes can be like draining, but something about being on your own, I don't know. It felt like really relaxing to me. So I capped off the day with going to this gorgeous rooftop bar. Um, It was called Mr. Purple on top of the Indigo Hotel. And it was so fire. Oh, wait, I almost missed a really important part. The reason I was telling you that I walked around all day. I go in this coffee shop. (laughs) And I go, I just go to use a bathroom. You can't use a bathroom anywhere in New York City. Like they don't allow you to like just go pee in Chipotle or like Target or anything. So I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have to buy my third coffee of the day and just go pee. So I go in the restroom, I come out and there's these girls standing there and the girl is like, has tears in her eyes and she's like, are you Jade Million? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I mean, I didn't say it like that. I was like, yeah, like obviously to smile on my face. I was just shocked. And she was like, I saw you walking down the street and I didn't know if it was you. I don't want to be creepy, but I did follow you in here. And I was like, that's fine. And she was like, I love you. Like, I love your music. I follow you on TikTok. And my eyes just like filled with tears. Like she was like on the verge of tears. She was like, I feel like such a weird, creepy fangirl right now. I didn't think it was you. I thought maybe someone else had just dyed their hair like you, but I just had a feeling. So I wanted to see and like, We just had the coolest moment ever. I was like, if this isn't a sign from the universe that I am on the right path, like in a different city, performing my own music, a girl sees me on the street. Like I'm, you know, I only have like 150,000 
followers on TikTok, like not anything crazy. So it's very unlikely for that to happen. It happens a lot in Nashville, but for me to be on the streets of New York City and this like random person just comes up to me and says that they not only like recognize me, but they're like, they love my music. That was so affirming. I actually really needed to hear that at that moment in time. So we just had like the coolest moment ever. So I was feeling so good that day because I was like, damn, like I don't even realize how many people I my music is reaching sometimes, you know? I I can't really understand how many people that truly is that see my live streams, see my TikToks, see the work that I'm putting in. That doesn't comprehend in my own brain until like I see it in real life. So it's it's just really cool to have that happen and she was really, really sweet. So we took like a picture together and it was so cute. So yeah. So then I went to like the rooftop bar, chilled, had a little, what are they called? Aperol spritz. You know, I was just living my best life, waiting for my dad to come pick me up and just reflecting on just how amazing it was. Honestly, the whole thing, I was like, this is what I want my life to be. I want my life to be traveling and performing music. And it just was the best 48 hours ever. Um, and then it was all downhill from there, guys. So obviously that was a high high, right? And my whole career is based off of high highs. I have very fun, um, exciting new experiences. I'm performing on stage. Like that's a high and an adrenaline surge in itself. Because for me, that's like a that gives me energy. Whereas some people I know like get nervous and all stressed out about it. I don't. It's like that's me at my best self. So, you know, I have this amazing time in New York City and then I go home for the weekend, which is always just like, it's, I just can never predict how my trips home, home are going to go. Like my small town, my parents, everything like that. Um, and it was just like, a lot different from me being in New York City by myself, living my life, the way that I live it, the way that I think and act every day. Like whenever I go home, it feels, I feel like I have imposter syndrome, if that makes sense, like to my own life. Cause like I'm back in this setting where I don't relate to the person that I was um, in this setting at all. But sometimes I feel like I'm still treated like that or I'm still viewed at. I'm still viewed as that person that I was um, and just a lot of like similar dynamics that I no longer like am comfortable with, I think kind of happen. And it's just hard for me because I'm like, how is how is this my life? But this is also my life, if that makes sense. So that's why I have this weird imposter syndrome when I go home of like, oh, like this is also a side of my reality that um I'm still trying to kind of work through and set boundaries and figure out. So I go home for a little bit and um, I come back to Nashville just now. I, and at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm drained. Like I, there was a lot of just energies and um, I don't know. It was just a lot for me. So I came home. I was tired, um, had a little bit of trouble getting back in my routine and then I just ended up kind of ha getting some really bad news. And it, I really do want to go into this topic, but I don't think it's time yet because it's news to do with something that I do. And I'm not fully out of that industry yet. And I don't want to necessarily go in on it until I feel safe enough to do so. So that episode will come about, but something that I, you know, basically bank on to help pay my bills and it has to do with music too. Um, but just something that I, that makes it possible for me to do everything that I do was ripped out from under me in a very unfair way, in a very messed up way. And if you feel like the shoe fits, you should, um, but all I have to say is this town is crazy. Like this town is like, it's after being here for seven years, it's just, it's wild. And I was getting to a point where it was time for me to let go of this anyway. And I was actually praying about it. And, um, I would say manifesting it without me really even realizing it, I guess, because it happened, like the energy was put out there um, that I was outgrowing this situation. And 
it was taken from me. And so then I had to kind of figure out, okay, like what's the next step for me and how am I going to continue to pursue my dreams? Cause let me tell you, dreams cost, dreams cost money. So I've just been in this weird place of uncertainty for the first time in a long time. And I know that people deal with this on a very regular basis, but the fact that I have music to always be my like lighthouse, it's made it easier for me to at least have some kind of path and goal and okay, I'm waking up and I'm doing this, this and this and like I'm working towards this. But for the first time ever, I can honestly sit here and say like, I don't know what to do next, guys. Like, I don't know. And that to me is so uncomfortable. Like I'm a control freak for sure. (laughs) And feeling like I have no control over what's going to happen next. On top of that, like the state of our world makes it very hard to feel grounded and certain about really anything. Um, The state of social media, like that makes it hard to know what you should pour into and what you shouldn't. There's just so many factors right now that I'm like, I don't even know what the next step is. And it's not a good feeling. Like it's very uncomfortable. And um, it's always hard to feel like you should be somewhere that you're not. And I, I really struggle with that. And I know like I'm all about mindset and self-help and I know all of the things about the place you have to have your mind at to achieve these things and to attract these things. I get it. Like I try my best. But there are some times where I'm just like feeling like I just can't right now. Like I, I, I can't have that mindset because I'm just a little scared and a little shaken up. So I just want to say that because I don't know if people know that about me, like that I actually am very uncertain. And I, a lot of the times do not know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I don't know the next steps. I don't know what, um, is the thing that I really need to be focused on or doing. I just kind of have to give up some control to, you know, my higher power and be like, look, I've put in the work up to this point and I will continue to put in the work, but I'm just going to let, let you know that I don't really know what's next for me. So I'm trying to figure that out, but that is what makes me kind of want to crawl into my little funk hole and die. Like I have not posted on TikTok for like, I don't even know a week at this point. Cause I feel like I just don't really have anything to give right now. Um, and that sucks because you are, you know, punished for that. If you're punished by the algorithm for that, um, for being human and that just kind of stacks up the anxiety and stuff. So I just made a decision today, um, that I'm getting out of this and April is going to be the best month of my life. And it is the last month before my birthday. So I have 30 more days left um, before my birthday. And I really, I I felt like I had two options here, the place that I'm at. I could either go into hiding and like recluse and like crawl into my shell and stay quiet and maybe just like work silently, which I do think that there is um, a lot of benefit to that. And I think that that those seasons are very much needed. I actually think that I will um, go into one of those seasons soon. But I was like, you know what? Like I have 30 days until my birthday. So I'm just going to go all out. And I was able to kind of break down what I needed to do in order to really feel like I gave it my all. And if by the end of the month, I'm totally burnt out and I'm like, I need a break from everything, then then I can crawl in my hole. You know, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm like, let's try this like balls to the wall, hard work. Um, first. And then if that feels like it didn't help my mental health, then I'll go the other way, you know? Um, so I just have some things that I'm going to do every single day to make sure that I am getting the absolute most out of my days. One big thing as far as content creation goes for me is it is completely unrealistic to be posting 
you know, three to five video pieces of content a day and getting anything out that is meaningful. Like I'm, I'm trying to overshoot at this point. And it's like, what is important for me with content creation? Um, what is important is telling my story, helping other people and inspiring people. Right. So if I'm just posting a bunch of random shitty TikToks that are working for other people that I think are going to work for me, like I just don't really like no wonder it's not hitting or translating. So I had to kind of restructure how I'm viewing content going into this month. And my goal is to actually document my life in a very real and authentic way um, as an independent artist. And I'm not going to like force myself to be posting three to five times a day. I'm not doing that. Like there's going to be one solid, great piece of content that I want to focus on every day. And just that's all like, that's all I'm going to do. And that's all I'm holding myself accountable for. I'm not like going to be over here, like doing a trending sound, doing a get ready with me, like all these random sh things that are working for other creators. I need to just focus on what is my truth and what I am trying to get out to the world and to you know, my fans and the people who support me and follow me, it's, it's the journey and it's the process that is important to me. So that's what I'm refocusing on, um, going into this month. But besides content, I actually made a schedule for myself because time management is probably like the biggest struggle of my life. And with how much freedom I have, there's almost like it, it's so bittersweet because I am my own boss, right? So that sounds fun. It's not because that means that you have to show up for you every single day. You're not, you don't have a boss to be like, you have to be here. You have to work from nine to 5 p.m. You get to clock out, forget about this and get your paycheck. Like that's not my life, you know? If I don't do a live stream one day because I'm not feeling like being on camera, I don't get paid. Like, that's just what it is. And if I don't post, I drop in the algorithm. Like, it is, it's a lot. So, in order for me to be able to do it in a way where it's going to be consistent and flow, I needed some time management. Like, I can't just expect myself to wake up and just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to like, attack the day and have have no plan or structure. So but yeah, so I just wanted to put together um, a Monday through Friday kind of thing because I felt like that was going to be the best way to structure my time and not be overwhelmed. I want to feel like I'm showing up to work and I want to feel like I know what I'm doing, honestly, like every hour of the day. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you guys. And if you guys want to copy this, you should. If you are like me and you work for yourself, please feel free to go ahead and use this little layout that I came up with. So number one priority for me is sleep. Sleep is so important and I need eight hours, seven and a half, eight, but we got to get sleep because if I don't get good sleep, I'm just not, I mean, I basically feel hungover. Like, I don't know if that's me getting older, but I just can't really function off of little sleep. But I will say in order to get good sleep, I really believe that you have to feel really accomplished and tired like physically and mentally by the end of the day um, and feel like you just had a great day. Like I think that's when you get the best sleep, you know, so even though I want to say it starts with sleep, it kind of starts with what you do in your day because that's the only way you're going to get good sleep. So for me personally, I'm a morning person. That's why I can't go be a bottle girl with the bottle girls. Like I just, that will fuck my whole life up. So um, that doesn't work for me. I need to be waking up at like 6.30, 7 a.m. That's what I prefer. So Monday through Friday, we're showing up to work. We're getting up at 6.30 a.m. We're waking up. We're doing it. We're getting our coffee. Um, journaling because I wake up with a lot of anxiety. So I think that journaling for me helps me get out, you know, the thoughts and just like this constant talking in my brain. I notice that if I lay in bed for too long in the morning, like the thoughts just start 
getting out of control. I'm like, okay, I have to get up like and just start moving because if you lay in bed and start to think, that's not good. Maybe I just have mental health issues. I don't know. Um, so we're going to journal and then we're also going to, you know, do, do gratitude. I've actually been switching this up lately. It's kind of like the same practice, but, um, I've actually been saying like what I have in abundance because I heard this video about how it's so important to already be on the frequency of abundance when you're trying to attract more. And so I've been saying things like I'm so abundant in opportunities. I'm so abundant in friends. I'm so abundant in um, creativity, you know, things like that, because then I'm like aligning myself with like, wow, I'm like so abundant. Like I attract so much stuff and I have so much then shit just starts coming to you because that's attractive to all the things that you want. So I think if you guys are like, ugh, gratitude, try switching it up. It's been really working for me. Um, oh, and I say outside if possible because I'm a big sunlight first thing in the morning. I think that that just does wonders for my mood. I feel a huge difference when I go outside first thing. Um, meditate, meditation. I hate starting it. But I realized this today when I was doing it, like I hate just like sitting down and doing it. But the second that I'm in it, I'm like, oh, my God, like I love this. Like this isn't hard. This isn't bad. I still am at um, guided meditation stage. So if you guys feel like meditation is scary and a lot, maybe try try that. 7.30, um, workout in the gym, lifting weights and um, doing my little 12, 3.30. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's walking uphill um, I love lifting weights. It makes me feel strong, powerful, sexy. Like I just love lifting weights. So that's just what works for me. Um, 9 30 shower, put on comfy clothes and protein smoothie check. This is the time to check emails and text messages. Like if I have to get back to people, that's a great time to do it. 10 AM. I call this class time. Um, I think a lot of anxiety comes from the skills that, we are procrastinating on either learning or doing. So like for me, there are certain things that I really want to achieve and learn. And I just constantly put off, constantly put off because it's going to be hard and it's going to test my brain. So I'm giving myself from 10 to 1130 AM. This is why I'm like going to be in comfy clothes and have not gotten ready yet because there's no filming. I'm not filming TikToks while I'm doing this. I'm not like doing any content things. It's class time, 45 minutes of learning production for me and 45 minutes of practicing lead guitar. So you could put in whatever skills you want to develop. Um, 1130 AM. This is when we get dressed, we get ready. We can film if we're feeling inspired or up to it. 1230 PM to 230. This is content creation time for me. So this is me focusing on what I need to do for my social media platforms. This is just a huge part of my job kind of is my job at this point. Um, I know this is not going to work for everybody, but if you're in my industry, maybe you can use that. 2.30, eat something that's prepped but filling and then get ready for stream. 3 to 7 p.m., we're live streaming on TikTok and Twitch. I know that's a long time. That can kind of vary just depending on the day, but no less than three hours. 7.30, or 7 p.m. So when we're done with live, we're done for the day. So this is when like, okay, like I feel accomplished. I've done a lot today. Go on a walk, kind of decompress. I I soak up a lot of the energy from the live streams. So I kind of need to be able to release that some way. So I think going on a walk is great. 7.30 p.m. We're done for the day. This is time to socialize, get dinner with friends, call your family, cook a nice dinner. Um, find balance and enjoyment in this time frame. 10 p.m., wind down, skincare, brush teeth, listen to something relaxing, hydrate, five minute nighttime meditation. Um, and then by 11 p.m., we are asleep. So that's kind of like how I'm going to be structuring my days in April. Um, I have a lot more free time now that I didn't have before because of this thing that happened. Uh, so I'm excited to see what living my life more disciplined and structured results in. Um, I think that, you know, doors close in life when it's time for you to move on and it's time for you to grow into something bigger and better. And sometimes what you're thinking is, you know, your comfort zone or like the level 
the highest level that you could be at, there's actually something so much greater planned for you. You just have to be courageous enough to take the leap and bet on yourself. So that's my goal in April is to just give it my all and really um, bet on me and know that everything is working out for my greater good. And, you know, everything that's happened to me um, the last few weeks is so I can really just step into my biggest and best self. So that's how we're going to get out of this funk, guys. Short little episode today. I hope I um, entertained you, inspired you. I don't know. But um, thank you guys for listening. And thanks for enjoying the podcast. I've gotten a lot of love on it. And it makes me really happy because this is a, you know, this is something that I want to be a big part of my life. So I have a lot of really fun and wild guests coming up. Um, I, you guys love the bottle girl episode and I love having people on that are just, they're willing to just give it all, share it all, say whatever. So that is really the realm of guests that I'm kind of looking at right now. I think there's so many people in Nashville that could give great perspectives and stories. So we'll keep the more, um, you know, serious, deep conversations for us, but expect some really cool and fun guests coming up. I love you guys. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube and um, rate the show on Spotify or, Spotify or Apple um, and follow me on socials. I am Jade Million. Go stream my music. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.